I will promise you this, that if we have not gotten our troops out by the time I am president, it is the first thing I will do. I will get our troops home. We will bring an end to this war. You can take that to the bank. Meanwhile, President Obama has ordered 17,000 more American troops to Afghanistan. It's the first stage of a build-up that will eventually see 60,000 U.S. troops deployed to the country. The U.S. president has revealed his plan for Afghanistan, escalating the war at the fastest possible pace. It is in our vital national interest to send an additional 30,000 U.S. troops to Afghanistan. When I was in Iraq, I saw the devastation that our invasion and occupation had met out upon the Iraqi people. I saw and at times participated in the dehumanization and de degradation of the Iraqi people by robbing others of their inherent dignity, by denying them respect, and by treating them as the less than human other. We ultimately robbed ourselves of our own dignity, humanity, and compassion. You roll into Baghdad, every single big apartment building is blown up. Every single apartment building in Baghdad has been broken to the ground by artillery and airplanes bombing. You cannot meet someone in Iraq who has not lost a family member. Could you imagine what we had done in America if in 9-11 everybody in America lost a family member? What would we be doing? Would we be talking about war? No, we'd be in the streets with weapons. And so people talk about, oh, these people killing American soldiers in Iraq, they're terrorists. They're not terrorists, they're wearing sandals. And they got an AK. And they got 14-year-old boys building bombs to kill these American soldiers because we killed their family. People just don't wake up and want to go kill people. I was ordered multiple times by commissioned officers and non-commissioned officers to shoot unarmed civilians if their presence made me feel uncomfortable. The primary loyalty is not to democracy or to the flag or to America or to the Iraqi people or to the rule of law. It is to each other's safety at the expense of everything else. There is a cost to this war and this cost is being paid in American blood in my soldier's blood, and that is not okay. From my perspective, it didn't seem to, to make any sense what we did. We didn't accomplish anything. A few months after it was there, I mean, a lot of things weren't sitting right with me. The, 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 the command structure, the, the missions that we were getting didn't make any sense. We we're going after people, Mujahideen or Muj, and uh, they didn't have any idea which ones were the right ones. We're kicking in the wrong doors, terrifying children. Helicopters screaming over their heads at night, and I was trying to calm the women and children while the men were dragged and separated out and uh, completely humiliated in front of their families. 9 11 was a lie, I know it. We're soldiers, we know it. And on March 21st of 2003, my military service was hijacked in an unconstitutional order to invade the sovereign nation of Iraq. This is a slap in the face to every service member who feels used because he was told he was going to go fight for his country and then was sent to go kick in the doors of innocent people unprovoked in the middle of the night to draw fire into their house so that we might have somebody to shoot back at. If the media was not biased, this film would be shown here so that you could then make a decision. Show them both sides of the story and then let the human being make the decision whether they want their kids there or not. Don't show me one side and say it's patriotism, it's courageous. Nothing I did in Iraq was courageous. I brought fear into people's homes. I traveled with a 50 caliber weapon every single day and slept with a pistol underneath my pillow. Tell me what is so courageous about that. And I tried hard to be proud of my service, but all I could feel was shame. And racism could no longer mask the reality of the occupation. These were people. These were human beings. I've since been plagued by guilt anytime I see an elderly man, like the one who couldn't walk, who he rolled onto his stretcher and told the Iraqi police to take him away. I feel guilt anytime I see a mother with her children, like the one who cried hysterically and screamed that we are worse than Saddam as we forced her from her home. I feel guilt anytime I see a young girl, like the one I grabbed by the arm and dragged into the street. We were told we were fighting terrorists. The real terrorist was me, and the real terrorism is this occupation. Funding the war is killing the troops. I mean, it, if you really think about it, it, it's really, really blatantly obvious, and it's really stupid that we have to say this, but we do. 
We have to get down to basics. We have to break it down Barney style, as we say. When I joined the military, I raised my hand and said that I would take the Constitution of the United States and the people and against foreign and domestic enemies. But guess what? I did not raise my hand to protect private companies like KBR and put my life on the line so they can make a buck. When are we going to realize that people fighting in the rank against us, they're not terrorists, they're soldiers. What would we do if somebody invaded us? I know I will pick up my weapon and fight against them. What the hell we call them? Terrorists? These people want their country back. Let's give them their country back. I won't even talk to politicians about the war. Because there ain't no point in it. Democrat, Republican, they're all profiteers of war. Even lots of anti-war organizations are profiting off my brother's pain. I'm embarrassed at the state of politics in America that it's come to that. We have to talk to Congress like they're fucking children. We've got a responsibility to the honor of this country and to the honor of every man and woman who has served in Iraq and ever served in our military to not leave them with anything less than the honor that they deserve. Honor? Are you kidding me? You saying that it's an honor to die in Iraq and to fight a war that we started and we're in the wrong. You're going to tell me that it's an honor to serve in Iraq when private contractors get paid $100,000 plus and drive $60,000 vehicles inside the base while soldiers are outside the base rolling and patrolling and losing their lives. Is that honor? Are you kidding me? Those who send us to war do not have to pull a trigger or lob a mortar around. They do not have to fight the war, they merely have to sell the war. They need a public who is willing to send their soldiers into harm's way. They need soldiers who are willing to kill and be killed without question. They can spend millions on a single bomb, but that bomb only becomes a weapon when the ranks in the military are willing to follow orders to use it. They can send every last soldier anywhere on earth, but there will only be a war if soldiers are willing to fight. And the ruling class, the billionaires who profit from human suffering, care only about expanding their wealth, controlling the world economy understand that their power lies only in their ability to convince us that war, oppression, and exploitation is in our interest. Our freedom comes from ourselves, when we make the decision to speak our mind. This is well within the rights that service members have, but not very many service members know that they have. As soon as I got out of the military, I joined an organization called Iraq Veterans Against the War, which aside from calling for full immediate withdrawal of all U.S. forces from Iraq, also calls for full support and benefits for returning veterans. We have members across the country and overseas, in Germany, in Iraq. Less than four years ago, there were seven of us, and today there are over 1,200. Our membership has more than doubled in the past year and is continuing to grow. So we do have a resistance movement. We do have dissent within the ranks. Uh, it's happening uh, for each one of us who goes public. There's probably a hundred, you know, who are resisting quietly. You know, let's be brutally honest. Our leaders aren't going to end the occupation. It's going to be us that ends the occupation. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think as a 24-year-old kid I should go to jail for not wanting to kill people. I had a personal experience after one of the talks that I did with, with a man. He, he came up to me after that and he told me he was an Iraqi man. And he said that he was from the area around Balad. And I was stationed in Balad. And I just, I, just, I just couldn't help it. Just all of a sudden I hugged the guy. And I said that I was sorry. That I was so sorry. And I ended up crying right there to this perfect stranger. And he told me it was okay. You know, he told me it was okay, and that that was that was redemption. To me, it's it's uh, this phenomenon that we're witnessing is actually a, a natural evolution. And any time you organize human beings to come together to use violence as a way of conflict resolution, you will have a breakdown of that organization. Peace is not a political process, and it's certainly not a militaristic process. I refuse to participate and the Iraq occupation. The real enemies are not in some distant land. They're not people whose names we don't know and cultures we don't understand. The enemy is people we know very well and people we can identify. The enemy is a system that wages war when it's profitable. The enemy is the CEOs who lay us off from our jobs when it's profitable. It's the insurance companies who deny us health care when it's profitable. It's the banks who take away our homes when it's profitable. Our enemy is not 5,000 miles away. They are right here at home. If we organize and fight with our sisters and brothers, we can stop this war, we can stop this government, and we can create a better world. There's a term, uh, once a Marine, always a Marine. But there's also the term, eat the apple, F the core. I don't work for you no more.
this society is so greedy, we're willing to go to war. We're willing to go places and send these big metal machines that kill people and fuck people up just so we can make more money. I mean, I've heard it argued, and argued successfully, that our society runs on war. Mm -hmm. You know, it runs on the domination of uh, the other parts of the world. And literally, that's the only way you can control a gigantic chunk of the globe. You have to keep everybody down. You know, and that's what our society is based on as far as our, our, our globalization, you know, uh, schematic that's been laid out by all these Republicans mm -hmm, and all these mm -hmm. Democrats and all these people that, you know, are pretending to be our leaders and mm -hmm. pretending to look for. None of these people have had these experiences. Mm -hmm. None of these people feel connected to everybody. They're still, even the best ones are still operating within a very old, old framework and a framework that's set up by ignorance. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a foolish framework. The idea that it should be okay to go somewhere and, and engage in war, to protect a society that wants to go places and engage in war. That's insane. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Because you're saying, I mean, that's automatically saying that the lives of the people here are worth more than the lives of the people everywhere else. And they're all one thing. They're all exactly the same.